to board alive. This week, we take an in-depth look at the business of making tartan. From its chequered history to the fashionable present, a tartan for Scotland's Muslims. We have two great civilizations, the Scottish and the Muslim civilization have made a huge contribution to humanity and the Islamic tartan is a symbol of that, weaving the two identities together. One of Selkirk's traditional tartan producers has been given a rather unusual commission to create Scotland's first Islamic tartan. It's the latest chapter in the long history of this textile, a tale which has taken some surprising twists and turns. Here's Sandy McCracken. All right, men, take a look. A dinner jacket of blue, white and black, if there is such a tartan. Yes, America has definitely gone all scotch. Fashions might have changed, but tartan has long endured as an icon of Scotland. For hundreds of years, weaving has defined the Tweed Valley in the same way that tartan is intertwined with Scottish identity. And that tradition is still going strong today. To really understand tartan, we have to look at its story. And it has a chequered history. From rebellion to royalty. How far back does tartan date? Tartan's actually got an extraordinarily long history. The Romans are writing about seeing Celts wearing tartan over 2,000 years ago, so extraordinarily long history. There's no one original tartan. People were simply dyeing the wool and the fabric with whatever natural dyes were available to them, so lichens, berries, mosses, things like that. They wouldn't be thinking about specific colours to make a point. They would be thinking, well, what is available in my natural environment? Very different viewpoint to the one we have today. When do we see the emergence of family and clan tartans? It's an interesting question. Uh, we can't put precise dates on it. Certainly in the later 17th century in battles like Killicranky, there's some evidence that particular clansmen were choosing to dress themselves in similar fashion. It's really in 1745 in Bonnie Prince Charlie's army where there are clan regiments wearing specifically recognisable clan tartan. Tartan gets banned in 1746. This is in the aftermath of the Battle of Culloden. It's the Hanoverian government deciding, you know, what can we do to suppress the Highlanders? Banning tartan and tartan dress was about stamping out Highland pride. The other side of the coin is that tartan be, continues to be worn by the military, so it takes on a different function because these are um, the military men of the government, so the government claimed tartan for themselves. The depiction of Tartan as a symbol of insurrection would change when Walter Scott, from his home in Abbotsford, published a series of rip-roaring novels in the early 1800s, which took inspiration from the stories of these lost Highlanders. What he does with his Waverley novels is getting rid of the, the demonisation of the Highlands, putting the romance back into the Highlands. <laughs> He's writing about the past, about the conflict between the government and the Highlands. What he's doing is, is making it more palatable. He's washing the bloodstains out of tartan, if you like. And then that reaches a, a pinnacle in the King's visit in 1822. King George IV's visit to Edinburgh was the first time a monarch had come to Scotland in nearly 200 years. Sir Walter Scott invited the clans to the capital, decked out in full tartan regalia. This pageantry caught the world's imagination and it's informed how we've looked at tartan ever since. 
I suppose, an outcome of the King's visit is this idea of family tartan. He creates that. He was interested in, in lineage and where people had come from, so tartan and family history collide in Scott and it becomes a Victorian obsession after that point. Tartan may be rooted in the past, but it's moving with the times. In 2009, the Scottish Government introduced an official list of tartans, and since then, over 1,600 new designs have been registered, and some have come from this factory here. DC Dalgleish and Selkirk have been producing bespoke tartans since 1947. Nick Fiddies took over the business five years ago and updating the types of tartan produced here has been essential in keeping the factory running while many other textile companies in the area have gone. We recognised there was a tremendous value in the, in the heritage and tradition and the, the knowledge that was locked up in this unique business. It long had the reputation for being the best quality fabric in the world. We wanted to emphasise tartan not just as a traditional item, but to build on that, to be relevant for modern lifestyles and modern needs. The tartans made here have been worn by high-profile clients around the world. They've produced tartans for Pixar, Google, and famously for Kate Middleton, who wears the tartan of the Countess of Strathairn. Although these tartans are being made for the modern world, producing bespoke tartans like these still involves a lot of working by hand. We were going to keep the hand crafting going as long as we possibly could because that in the end is what we're rooted in. The most important element in tartan is of course the threads. The factory has hundreds of differently dyed yarns wound into big spindles known as cheesies. So this is the cheese. We dye those in volume and then we wind them on these cones to actually be usable in the mill. By hand, the different colours are arranged onto a special pegged frame. Then hand spun into these rope-like structures known as the warp. These are the vertical stripes of tartan. This is attached to the loom, thread by thread. It's meticulous work. Just one of these in the wrong place and the whole fabric is ruined. The horizontal threads, known as the weft, are spun onto bobbins. They're loaded into a cartridge and using what is called a flying shuttle, fired through the vertical strands. These machines are around a century old and you can see this in the hand-cut metal chain which acts as a rudimentary computer, telling the machine what colour of thread to fire from the loom. All these tartans have a near continuous thread running through them, something that can only be achieved using this handcrafted process. Our heart and soul is basically rooted in, in these old-fashioned processes. That's not just romanticism, it's, it's actually because that's the only way you can produce these really high-quality fabrics. There's something about the traditional handcrafting that gives that authentic quality and we did not ever want to lose that. One of their most recent commissions shows how the clientele for Tartan is changing. Scotland has a population of around 60,000 Muslims. 
and the factory was approached to produce a tartan that reflects the unique dual identity of this community. Symbols are very important to bring communities together. For example, national flag is something that people usually rally around and I believe that it was time to have a Scottish Islamic tartan. DC Douglas helped us in terms of coming up with the, the actual concept of the tartan. We consulted a number of Islamic scholars and traditional tartan designers to come up with this final product. If you look at the design here, the blue represents the flag of Scotland, the saltire. Then you have the green, which is the traditional colour of Islam. They have the five white lines, which represent the five pillars of Islam. The six gold lines represent the six articles of faith, and the black square that envelopes the design represents the Kaaba in Mecca. We have two great civilizations, the Scottish and the Muslim civilization, that have made a huge contribution to humanity, and the Islamic tartan is a symbol of that, weaving the two identities together. As well as adding a modern twist to an old fabric, bespoke tartans like the Islamic pattern are giving a future to the tradition of weaving in our region. Well, I can get quite evangelical about tartans. There's nothing like it on earth. Uh, it's Scotland's gift to the world in terms of representing communities, who you feel you belong to, uh, in a very beautiful and aesthetic way. It can be made into a very bold statement, it can be made into quite a subtle statement. It can be worn for special occasions or it can be worn every day. It's infinitely flexible. There really is no one like us in terms of the range of iconic and highly respected heritage we have, which people around the world love, and we've got to make more of that, I think. We've done so with, with Tartan, we're increasingly doing so with Tartan, we're by mo no means finished yet, we've got a long way to go. It's got to be talking about how this speaks to the world today and what people are looking for from us. Today at the factory we saw all sorts of new Tartan designs and there's new ones being added each day. What do you think Walter Scott would have made of it all? I think he would have been intrigued. But he would certainly be proud that Tartan around the world today is associated with Scotland. For nearly 200 years, tartan has been evolving. It remains a vivid depiction of the fabric of our country.